for cryptography uses, which I actually uh, found recently when I visited uh, France uh, in May this year. So this is a joint work with the uh, Cloud Khalid, uh, Pilip Gabori, and Patrick Sole, all from France. <coughs> Since uh, most of you are not familiar with coding theory, let me give you a brief introduction to coding theory and then move to uh, our new class of linear codes called complementary information set codes. And then how do you construct them using some graphs uh, called the strong regular graph and uh, doubly uh, regular tournament. And then we classify all such uh, CIS codes of lengths up to 12. And then um, it, it is very hard to classify uh, CIS codes of lengths greater than uh, 12. So we just stop there. However, we just find a, a family of CIS codes uh, which are optimal. In other words, uh, which have a large minimum distance. Still, this is final length. So what happens if the length is one million or something? Then what's the uh, corresponding minimum distance? So we just discuss the uh, issue of long CIS codes and conclude this talk. Here's the, um, the slide that telling what's the coding theory. So the coding theory I'm talking about it belongs to this channel coding. Uh, so it's a coding theory or algebraic coding theory. And then uh, source coding is about uh, compression, you know. It's like a zip file, uh, JIP, zip file, or JPG. This kind of the uh, technique, technique comes from this uh, source coding. And then you might, uh, you, uh, you know, this cryptography. And uh, these are also uh, all under the, the, the area called information theory, developed by Shannon, basically. Even though cryptography was known a long time before him, but he also analyzed the, um, the cryptographic, uh, the, uh, the uh, behavior by information theory. And, but uh, I, I would say all these are uh, the area uh, really under mathematical or communication theory. So I put this, this one on the top, okay? <laughs> Let's be proud of this one. And uh, Shannon suggested this uh, nice channel. Basically, this tells everything about coding theory. In other words, uh, coding theory is uh, adding more bits, redundancy bits. So in other words, if you have one, instead of sending one through channel, channel can be a line just a wireless line or a wire line, either one is fine. So instead of sending one through the line, you just add two more bits so that uh, one is sent one on one. That will be sent through the line, okay? And if the receiver, say, receives 0, 1, 1 because of the error in the first uh, uh, position, in other words, 1, 0, 0 is added to this uh, uh, encoded vector, then you get 0, 1, 1. But the receiver knows that it should come from either 0, 0, 0 or 111, so it can decode it. Okay, so whenever you have one error in any of these three positions, you can decode it. So this is really one error correcting code. So in other words, when, when I say code, I mean the, the set of two uh, vectors of length 3, 0, 0, 0, 111. Okay. So we just want to generalize this concept uh, uh, by just uh, adding more ones. Uh, and, uh, and make sure that you can add, you can correct more than one errors, blah, blah, blah. So that's the basic idea of coding theory. Uh, <coughs> even though I only discussed binary code, where well, uh, A can be then uh, G2, but you can really generalize all these concepts over finite field with a finite number elements, or uh, generally a Q, or a ZN, the uh, modular ring. Yeah? And uh, th these, these can be generalized into Galois rings. Have you heard about Galois rings? It's a natural generalization of uh, Galois fields. So normally Galois fields comes from the factorization of the polynomial okay, over a finite field with uh, some irreducible polynomial. Galois ring is obtained by factoring uh, the a polynomial over, in general, uh, say, uh, G Gn, okay, and then you just factor that polynomial ring by uh, some so-called basic irreducible polynomials, okay, so it, it includes Galois fields, and it's a really chain ring, so this is another uh, idea, including this class, and also Frobenius rings will be a uh, very uh, large class of rings, and the, why do we study these rings? Because uh, over these rings, coding theory behaves very well. If you plug in uh, different rings, then coding theory do not work very well. So this is 
maybe Frobenius rings the largest rings that you can include, but most rings you know will be included in Frobenius rings. So you don't know about very strange ring. Okay. So the uh, you look at the antipodes from a A and an error correcting code simply code over A is a subset of A N. It's very simple definition, right? It's just code means just a non-empty. Well, we include that uh, more than one, but uh, it's basically a, a non-empty subset of A N. So these are just uh, simple definitions. You can easily look at code words, binary code, a weight. Weight concept of a vector in general is the number of non-zero coordinates. So in this case, uh, you have three non-zero coordinates. Okay. Don't worry about, you do not distinguish one and two. Just uh, everything, whenever it's non-zero, you just regard it as a weight one. But in a more advanced coding theory, if this is, uh, uh, if everything is in G4, mm, then Lee weight concept tells that one is one, but two is considered uh, as weight two. So the weight, with respect to Lee weight, this will be four. So that's a different weight. This is called the Hamming weight. So the Hamming distance between two vectors will be uh, the weight x minus y. Okay? It's a very important concept. And uh, <coughs> we focus on, you know, the basic linear codes because linear codes are easy to store uh, in practice. So uh, because of the, uh, uh, because of the uh, k-dimensional subspace uh, can be described as a, a, a k basis vectors and all other code words will be a linear combination of these uh, uh, basis vectors. So we look at only linear code of length n dimension k. And uh, that, that's denoted by just nk linear code. Minimum distance or minimum weight of D is the minimum number of weights of the uh, code word, which is not zero case, okay? And so we have three parameters, n, k, d, but this uh, given n and k, you know, the d can't be uh, really large. So of course d measures the number of uh, uh, weights, okay, I mean the, the, the minimum uh, weight. So uh, this d is less than or equal to n. However, it really um, it depends on the dimension size k. So it is n most n minus k plus one. It's, it's known as singleton bound. And a set of k columns is actually called an information set if it is linearly independent. Because it's an nk code, the rank of the, uh, uh, the code is n, so there exists a set of um, k columns, okay, which has rank exactly k as well. Yeah, that, this concept is very important in, in my talk. So just remember that. It is well known that if these are large, then it can correct many errors. Uh, how many uh, errors can the code correct? Well, t is uh, about d minus one over two. Okay. So if d is large, then you can correct many errors. <coughs> so in our previous example, uh, we had a actual linear code consisting of two code words. And uh, this is a generator, one, one, one. So the, you, you, you just, these, these pink balls represent two code words. Then you receive a vector, say zero, one, mm, this can be one, zero, zero. Then you can decode it to zero, zero, zero. So you look at the, uh, uh, the closest code word, okay? Then that's the decoding method. And also if you have the received vectors here and there, then you can decode to there. So <coughs> you can always decode one error, but not, not in this case. So this is linear code, but uh, when you have a, a received beta, you do not know where to go. So you just say, there is an error, but you do not know how to decode it in this case. Because uh, this is uh, uh, even weight code, right? All code words have even number of ones. So if something has a weight one, then it's, it does not belong to here. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not a code word. We know that yeah, by, by that property. So I'm going to talk about uh, the Euclidean inner product, which is the usual dot product of two vectors. And the dual <coughs> is the set of vectors orthogonal uh, to every code word of the given code, okay? So this is the same concept of the dual of the um, 
in general vector space over uh, complex numbers. Uh, <clears throat> in, in the binary case or in finite field case, it is possible uh, to have C equals C perp. It's not possible in, in our complex, over complex numbers. But it is also, it, it's actually possible to have the equality. So if so, then C is called self-dual, okay? Mm. If C is contained in each dual, C is called self-orthogonal. Okay. Mm. We have the concept of the formally self-dual. If the weight enumerator of the dual code is equal to the weight enumerator of the original code, what's the WCXY? That's the uh, homogeneous polynomial in two variables. Uh, where the coefficients ai represent the number of code words of weight i. So you just, uh, <coughs> this is more or less geometric, uh, the, 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 uh, the element, right? It's, uh, it's a vector will have the, just, just start from the zero code words and look at the code words around the zero vector and uh, count the number of the uh, ones there. So you collect all code words having weight i. So that's ai and blah, blah, blah. So it measures, uh, it represents something about the code, but not everything. <coughs> so the self-dual code will be on formally self-dual uh, code, but not the converse. And uh, a code is uh, divisible by some number delta if all code words have weight divisible by that delta, okay? So here is a famous example um, by Hamming. So this is a generator matrix for 844, uh, code, and uh, you can see that all uh, the dot product of any row will be zero, so um, it's a self-dual, and uh, the minimum distance d equal four uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, appears if you add, uh, for example, uh, two rows. E each row has uh, four ones, but to, to get all code words, you have to consider any linear combination of this. If you add two rows, then from this pattern, you get two distinct ones, right? This will be zero. So when you add two rows, then you get two ones in this side and you get two ones in the other side. So the weight is four. Uh, if you add three, any three rows, then, then you get three ones. And also you, you have at least uh, one to three ones. And then the other will be two ones. So you get another non-zero one. So the minimum distance will be four. If we add four rows, then at least four, okay. And uh, <coughs> in fact, all um, the rows, except uh, the, the when you add all rows or the zero, zero row, um, you get actually weight of four code words. Okay, it's a very nice uh, weight distribution. So divisor will be four. Mm. So the self dual codes are very uh, the, the popular class of linear codes, including theory, because of its uh, wide connections uh, with uh, a lot of areas. In mathematics. Uh, so it's, it's natural to ask whether you can find another class of codes containing uh, self-dual codes as a subcode, subclass. So that's one motivation to, to study um, uh, th this linear code, which I'm going to introduce. Uh, that's this one. It's called a complementary information set uh, codes. In other words, uh, the size of the code is, uh, I mean, the length of the code is 2n, dimension is n. Uh, and if there exists an information set, okay, whose size should be then n, and also whose complement is also an information set. Okay, so you have two n columns. There will exist at least uh, n columns, which must be um, linearly independent. And another condition is that the other n columns are linearly independent as well. That's the object we are talking about. But nobody really look at that kind of object, including theory. So this is our uh, really uh, new concept here. So it's that's why we say complementary information set. So the information, the complement of information set is also information. So uh, if you look at maybe this natural one, the, the first n columns and the other n columns if th those n columns are, uh, 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 correspond to uh, uh, information sets, then we say systematic partition. And systematic self-dual codes are CIS. Uh, that means, uh, maybe, okay. Uh, systematic self-dual codes are uh, defined by identity I and uh, matrix A, but 
the self-duality condition may, means that A and A transpose is identity, which guarantees that, that A is invertible. So uh, you get really uh, CIS code with the systematic partition. So CIS codes include uh, self-dual codes. So basically identity with some uh, invertible matrix. In order to give uh, the cryptographic uh, the motivation of CIS codes, I just uh, very briefly mentioned the S box. It's any map from F to N to F to N. Okay. The Boolean uh, function is a map from here to just F2, but this is a really uh, more general one. And Walsh Hadamard transform at AB is defined by this. It's a little bit complicated. Okay. That's the function, I guess, giving you uh, 0 or 1, I mean negative 1, 1, 1, 0 and uh, some, some integer general. So the CIS codes have an application in cryptography uh, uh, in the frame of countermeasures to side channel attack. So uh, what's the meaning of countermeasure? It, it, the, the, in Korean, this means a uh, check. Side channel attack means uh, some side, side attack in, in Korean, okay? So the, uh, you want to know, uh, maybe here is the, the motivation again. Okay? Normally, when you have a crypto system like RSA or other crypto system, this global uh, problem-based uh, crypto system, you mathematicians or computer scientists try to find some uh, uh, efficient way to, to solve that MP problem into some uh, solvable problem, right? They try to analyze the algorithm itself, right? Okay, whether it's uh, possible to solve in, in a reasonable time. That's the, the normal uh, the attack. However, in practice, people really um, uh, uh, get some information uh, physically. So in other words, a smart card is very small. So people, the engineers, look at smart card, and then they test the, they send some uh, the, the power there. And then by looking at the, the, the power, they can tell some information there. So that's like a side channel attack, OK? So people try to. Uh, really uh, the, uh, overcome that kind of the attack. So this is another big issue. So as I said here, um, this information, leaking information, um, <coughs> can be used in uh, this uh, differential power analysis or in other kinds of side channel attack. So you need to really uh, include some uh, extra information called the mask. It's like uh, you're hiding the information by masking. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, that was the really suggested recently, just one year ago, by the, the, these people. So uh, if you have just one mask, this is not still uh, secure, right? Somebody might know that there is only one mask. You can just take that mask out, then it's, it's not the safe. So you add another mask. Yeah. You add ma more masks, then it's a, uh, it's a heavy load, right? You have uh, many unnecessary information there. So that's not really good too. So you know the people try to um, uh, give the, the the same security as adding more mass, but try to minimize the cost. So that can be done by uh, really maybe this one um, <coughs> using one single mask and encoding. In other words, generating other mask based on that one mask. How about that? So you just uh, apply one simple mask and then. Um, the, the, the use that mask to get uh, extra mask so that you, you get the, about the same um, level of the security. That's the main idea of this one, okay? <coughs> so the, this is more technical, but basically using that uh, the idea, it turns out that uh, the existence of a linear uh, D uh, graph Im uh, correlation immune function of M variables that's the basically uh, the existence of certain uh, the crypto system which can uh, uh, overcome any attack of order D. So when D is high, that means uh, the crypto system where the, yeah, the crypto system is uh, more secure. So you want to maximize D. So the existence of such a such function is equivalent to the existence of a CIS code uh, with parameters to n, n, and minimum distance at least d. So that's why we try to maximize d. If d is large, then we have a better uh, secured uh, crypto system. Okay. 
So we focus on the uh, existence of codes having these parameters. Make sense? So now we, we, we try to find um, how many then CIS codes of these parameters given uh, D exist. Or if that, that's not possible for large lengths, then you try to uh, find the, the possible, the largest minimum distance D um, uh, for a given uh, 2N or N dimension N. So that's an optimal code problem. Okay. So from now on, uh, let me give you more general construction of the CIS code. So, so the CIS code, <coughs> the code word is the complementary information set? No, no, code words will be uh, the, the any linear combination of all these rows. Oh, okay. okay. So this uh, uh, CIS condition says that this A is invertible. That's what this CIS condition means. Because I is invertible. So the, its complement is uh, this, the other, uh, the n plus 1 through n, 2n positions. So uh, if a C uh, has generated a matrix of this form with A invertible, then C is CIS with a systematic partition. This is clear, yeah? Conversely, every CIS code, in fact, can be uh, transformed to a code with a generic matrix in that form by column permutations, okay? First of all, you, you apply the Gauss elimination and then move the columns whenever you have the identity. So you just move columns, okay? <coughs> okay, and... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And also, if you have a polynomial over F2 with degree less than n, the GCD uh, between Fx and Xn minus 1 is 1. Okay? Then, uh, this polynomial uh, can be used uh, to, to generate a circular matrix um, where the first row comes from Fx, Okay, fx can be understood as a, 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 a vector, right? It's a polynomial uh, of length n most uh, n minus one. Then the, <coughs> the non-zero the terms can be put as a vector, okay, of length n. It's a very uh, natural uh, correspondence. So, and then you just quickly shift the first row, okay, and to get second row, and then the third row is the quickly shift of the second row, etc. So that that matrix, circular matrix, also has uh, rank n. So this is one way to get a uh, circular and uh, uh, non-singular matrix. Because our goal is to really find an uh, invertible matrix here. So if you uh, apply this uh, one with uh, fx, then it is a, a CIS code, okay? Now this is another thing. If a matrix C has generated matrix I A with the rank of A is less than uh, n over two, in other words, the rank of A is very small compared to length, then C can be uh, a CIS code. Okay. So this is uh, some condition. Okay. I will make the proof. <coughs> we can also get uh, uh, CIS codes by looking at uh, uh, very well known um, the, the graphs from Azure Combinatrix. So the let A be the uh, 0, 1 adjacent matrix of a strongly regular graph okay, with uh, these parameters, uh, which means that A is uh, symmetric and satisfies this condition, and A squared equals this. So there is a, uh, some <coughs> geometry way to uh, describe strong regular graph, but this really tells everything about that. Okay. Uh, another counterpart of strong regular uh, graph uh, is called a doubly uh, regular tournament, okay? So in this case, it's skew symmetric and same condition, but the A square is different. Okay. It's another. So uh, there is a fancy name to include both. Uh, it's called the two class association schemes. Okay. So we, we take this one uh, as our main matrix, uh, depending on the condition of the parameters, kappa, Lambda, so if they, these are even and mu is odd for, for, from the, the uh, string regular graph of odd order, and take that A and add identity there, then this N is invertible. Okay, so you, you keep doing this one. So for, uh, which, 
for under which conditions on kappa mu and lambda and also uh, uh, a uh, you, you get uh, the inverter matrix so th these are the conditions so it's not really hard okay <coughs> And in particular, if you take a Q as uh, the Q by Q matrix, such that the um, QIJ is one, if and only if J minus I is a square matrix, okay, then this matrix Q uh, uh, really gives you the, this one. So Q is the adjacent matrix of a string regular graph of these parameters. If Q equals 4K plus one, similarly, when Q equals 4K plus three, it's also the adjacent matrix of a DRT with different parameters, okay? And so the, using the previous argument, so Q plus identity will be invertible, so the whole thing is uh, CIS and et cetera. And it turns out that calls, these calls really have very uh, high minimum distance, okay? It's called actually quadratic double circulant calls. So this construction, uh, I mean, this general construction because it includes so the, the special case, we, we believe that our uh, general statement uh, will give very good uh, 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 high weight, uh, uh, high minimum distance code, but we didn't really uh, test other than this family because we have many results, so we don't need to include all the results for later uh, research, okay? Okay, uh, maybe just skip this slide, okay. Uh, let me mention how, how do you really uh, construct, I mean, classify all CIS codes of certain uh, lengths. Basically, uh, you count uh, first the number of invertible matrices. Uh, okay, that is A part, right? And that's uh, the, uh, that A actually uh, form the general linear group, right? Of dimension N over F2. So this is the size, right? This is a very well-known formula. That's the size of GL N2. However, uh, in coding theory, you, you, you allow the column permutations, actually. So you can uh, permute the last N columns, last N columns, to get the same, I mean, equivalent code. So you, you have GN divided by N factorial. Then still, you get uh, uh, the equivalent uh, codes. So there are at most GN divided by N factorial uh, inequivalent um, CIS codes. However, this number GN is, is growing quick if N is large. So uh, this is not a really good upper bound, frankly speaking. Uh, let's look at the uh, example here. If length is two, then <coughs> you have only one CIS code, which is generated by uh, just all one vector, one, one, okay? One, one uh, is a CIS code because the first position is uh, um, the trivially uh, rank one and the second column is rank one as well. If n equals two, this n uh, is not the length. Actual length is two n, so uh, n equal to means the length is four, so this is a part, so this, either this part or this will be an invertible matrix, but they became uh, equivalent because it looks the same by permitting columns. So, uh, so these two gives you one code, and then trivial one will be one zero zero one case, that identity case. So you have only two uh, inequivalent CIS codes. So you have two here, but from the previous calculation, if you look at this number here, it gives you three. So for n equal two case, this is not really, not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens if n equals uh, four, six, blah, blah, blah? So in that case, it will be very hard. So we, we use some uh, called building a construction, which was known for binary self dual codes. Uh, the idea is that given on 2n and CIS code with this generator matrix. Uh, of course, A is invertible. We can delete two columns, one column from IN, actually the first, uh, not, not necessarily first, uh, uh, first column here, some column of the identity, 
and also delete another column from A and delete another one row from the whole row so that you have 2 times n minus 1 n minus 1 CI is code and it should guarantee that the, the, this part A prime which, whose size is uh, 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 n minus 1 times n minus 1 uh, that should be invertible so it's not it, it's not it's not really uh, clear to, by just cutting any any one column here any one column and deleting one row that, it, then it does not guarantee to get invertible matrix here okay, we have to be carefully delete some columns here and some columns okay but in my proof uh, I delete uh, the first column from a and then uh, depending on the situation you delete uh, um, another column here and row here so not necessarily the first column of this identity matrix now, what, how about the converse? In this case, you start from a length 2 and CIS code, <coughs> get a CIS code of length 2 n minus 2, right? Now, how about the converse? You start from length 2 n CIS code, and so this is the uh, generator matrix of that code, and then you add carefully one column, another column here, and you add another row here to make sure that the whole thing here is invertible. I mean, th this whole thing is invertible. Mm -hmm. So this should be as general as possible because we want to you know, generate many, many uh, invertible matrices. So uh, x is really arbitrary. This part is arbitrary. Any, any, any random vector, OK? For classification purpose, you can, get, you can test all lengths and vectors here, and similarly here. But this z1 should be carefully chosen just like this depending on these chosen vectors here. So this uh, Z1 is a function of really X and Y's here to make sure that this whole row is uh, uh, linearly independent, okay? Mm. Uh, here's an example. <coughs> Suppose you, you, you have one uh, CIS code with uh, length 6, so this is invertible. And using the, the previous building a construction, I take x to be 1, 1, 0. That's this. y to be 1, 1, 0. Okay? And then uh, this z1 is carefully chosen so that this is 1. Then it turns out that this whole thing, whole thing is really invertible. In fact, this code is equivalent to the uh, extended Hamming A4 code. So this is another way to get uh, extended Hamming code from lengths. 6 CIS code. Sure. Is it something uh, related to your? Okay. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, th this this one, I mean this uh, the slide is from uh, our submitted paper, and that submitted paper is already in archive, so can easily look at the actual thing, okay? And also you can find it from my homepage as well, so. Okay, and then, um, the, the main thing is this one, any 2n and CIS code uh, is basically, uh, well, it's equivalent to the same length CIS code with the systematic partition, in other words, identity with another thing, okay? We can always convert that one to the identity with the invertible thing, but that, that special form is constructed from length um, uh, two less uh, CIS code uh, using the building of construction. So once you have all classification of certain lengths, then um, you, you can classify uh, the all CIS codes with lengths two to higher. That's the, the main idea here. So that uh, when uh, <coughs> the length was, two uh, uh, n is our length, by the way, is two, we had uh, one one. Uh, I mean, the uni unique size code with uh, generator matrix one one. And uh, when two n was four, we had actually two codes, right? But that that can be easily justified from this uh, building a construction. So this one one has this is the a part. So you have a part, and then you this is x part, y part. You just put zero zero one one, but you have another possibility one zero zero one. But they they give you the same thing, so uh, basically you, you have only two. Uh, the invertible matrix is giving you inequivalent CIS codes, so there are two such codes. And when 
length is 6, then it turns out that there are 6 okay, in equivalent CI scores. But as I said, uh, mm, when I dis uh, the, give the motivation of CI scores, we want D as large as possible. So when the total length is 6, only one code has D equals 3. So this is the most interesting uh, code for our purpose. But from a theoretical point of view, you know, it's, uh, it's good to know the the other, uh, non, I mean, the other uh, non-optimal cases. So we, we keep doing this uh, uh, for larger lengths. When n, 2n is uh, 8, then uh, there are 2n is 7 uh, CI is close, okay? And when n equals 10, 195. So when, when I run this one by computer, we have to use, apply the computer anyway. Uh, we can get this much in, in a few minutes, but for this part, it takes a while, maybe, um, a few hours, a few hours, because uh, we have to test all, all uh, codes and then get the minimum distance. So, and why do I have three columns? Uh, because the first column represents the um, self-dual class. Okay, <coughs> so for n equals uh, mm, ten, for n equals ten, there is no self-dual code with uh, minimum distance four. But CIS code case has a uh, uh, two number two. That means there are non self dear um, CIS codes, okay, with D equal four. So, because it's a super class. And second one is about formally self dear So this number two um, excludes self dear case, formally self dear case. This is a purely uh, new class, actually. Okay, so this, this number is known, actually, uh, because people already uh, classified formally self dear codes up to certain lengths. So these are known, but these no third columns here are all new. Okay, these are all new. Okay, that's the classification problem. As I said, that will be hard if the length increase. Now, how about uh, just uh, look at, uh, looking at only optimal case, the largest minimum distance case. Fortunately, there are many optimal codes uh, known for very uh, large lengths in, uh, from coding theory, but we do not know whether that's a CIS or not, because there is no concept of CIS before. So we look at the, the known, uh, best known codes uh, or optimal codes of uh, each length, and then test whether it's really CIS or not. Many codes are CIS, but if it's not, then we just uh, 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 converted what we find by ourselves. So uh, this table tells that all known, best known CI codes or all optimal codes uh, can be constructed from CIS codes. Okay, so CIS codes is a special class of linear codes, but it's more than that. It gives an uh, optimal minimum distance as well. Okay, so. Now, if the length increase, we still we do not know how, the, how good the, our CI codes are. So, you know, the, this is another uh, direction. So, the number of invertible n by n matrices, which was denoted by Gn before, uh, is approximately c times 2 to the n square the C is about uh, 0.29. So that's the total number of invertible n by matrices. Okay. It's very huge. And then we count some uh, bad matrices, B and D. Okay, I don't know about the, the meaning of the, the, this one, but basically you collect all matrices A such that D or uh, less columns of this one are linearly, in de linearly dependent. So then number B and D is bounded by another uh, polynomial, N and D, which is given by this. So uh, this uh, bad generator matrix is bounded by another big matrix here, I mean big formula here. <coughs> and then we apply the, uh, uh, the idea that this bad thing, if the bad thing is very, uh, uh, compared to the, the total number of all important matrices, so this includes some good thing then, because this is a bad thing, right? That means there will exist some good thing. So that's why uh, when this occurs, in other words, uh, 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 I, I skipped one, one thing, so this N, ND is also bounded by these certain things here. So uh, applying this number and uh, this number together, we get this result. So for each delta, um, such that the binary entry function less than 0.5, there are long size codes of relative distance delta, okay? So this one, 
uh, <coughs> what does this mean? Uh, you can, in fact, you can choose delta is about 0.11, okay? Because that's the number when h delta is 0.5, because the delta, uh, this entropy function uh, <coughs> is like this. So when it's uh, 0 0.5, then the corresponding delta is about 0.11. So what does this mean is that if the length is, uh, say, 1,000, then relative minimum distance is uh, uh, d over 2n. So basically, uh, you, you can guarantee about minimum distance 1 on 110. So minimum distance is about 1 tenth. Okay. So if the length is like uh, 1 million, then it's like um, tenths of the 1 million will be the possible minimum distance. If you look at this thing, say 100, this is about 100, uh, the ratio is uh, um, uh, about this, uh, 20 over 100. This is 20%, uh, uh, right? 20% of the length. Yeah, but if the length is large, of course, uh, the minimum distance will be, won't be that large. So it's about 110, yeah, 0.11. Yeah, so in this talk, I give you a new class of um, CIS codes and how do you construct them. But it has some cryptographic uh, modification a as well, although it has some uh, coding theoretical application. And also, uh, is there any, any um, general upper bound, specifically uh, uh, the dominating the minimum distance of uh, CIS codes? We do not know that. And also, it's worth uh, studying the CIS codes over non-binary fields or Z4 as well. So there are many uh, open problems in this direction. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>